Today on Briar Teen News, we are here at Stoneman Douglas High School. Stay tuned to find out more about country singer Dirk Bentley, the CMT headquarters, and students making a difference in school. This year at Student Television Network, students had the opportunity to talk to country singer Dirk Bentley about his charity work and singing. Here's Nelson LeBroy with more. We're here in downtown Nashville to talk to one of the most humble, down-to-earth, funny people you will ever meet. And we had the chance to interview him to talk about his impact on the community. He is known for his amazing guitar playing and rocking country music, but on the side, he does a lot of community work. You know, we started, uh, I moved to Nashville when I was 19 and never dreamed that, you know, I dreamed of this being successful, but never thought it'd really, you know, work out the way it did, and it's been such a great journey. But uh, as soon as you start having some success, you start thinking about how you can use your celebrity currency in a positive way to, to give back to the community that really uh, helped you get off the ground. So um, the most obvious choice was the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. Everyone that knows the situation knows I'm not the star. Truly the doctors and the technicians, the administrators, and the nurses, you guys are the stars. Nashville isn't the same as Hollywood, but famous country singer Dirks Bentley was awarded a star today for his contribution to the hospital. Walk of Champions is a new idea for us. So, so many of you will know that you have, like in Hollywood, a, a walk of fame, and it's a star that's put on a, on a road, a sidewalk. So here at the Children's Hospital, we have a Main Street. It looks like a Main Street. It, it has street signs, and it has different stores, and it looks like kind of a Main Street. So we thought, why don't we put a Walk of Champions and honor them if they have been lifelong committed champions for what we do and what we represent. So Dirks is the first, so this is the first star. Just everybody can do something, right? You know, there's a lot of big problems out there to tackle. Um, and it just all starts with one voice at a time, one action at a time. Um, if you try to look at it from a big macro perspective, it could seem daunting, any, anything. Certainly, you know, all the, these, what these kids are battling here. I'm also pleased to share that this year we achieved um, top tier national rankings in all 10 out of 10 pediatric specialties. As Vanderbilt is a successful children's hospital, Dirk brought his charitable work and attitude to the right place. You know, whatever you're passionate about, I wouldn't look at trying to be successful. I just look at following what you're passionate about and, and finding something you really enjoy doing. And, and if you have some little inner voice tells you that there's something there and, and you start feeling like you're doing what feels like could be a calling to you, you should definitely follow that. This is Nelson LaBoy from WMSD News, signing off. Now we go to Alex Rosenblatt at the CMT headquarters. In the heart of Nashville, Tennessee, lies the home of a network solely focused on country artists and their music, CMT. CMT is the place that gave me my first internship and my first job. Um, to me, it's a place of opportunity and it's full of energy. It's a place where I feel like I can really grow as a professional. CMT is uh, the authority, I would say, on country music. We're the one of the few remaining music networks that actually shows music. And no offense to our friends at MTV, but but you know they. When I was growing up, they showed a lot of videos and stuff. We still do that. We still um, we still cover every aspect of, of country music, and you know we take a lot of pride in it. I think it's doing really well. I mean, I think there are ebbs and flows, ups and downs in music in general, and certainly in country music. Um, and there are times where, you know, there's an audience of people who are younger and older. But that's the great thing about country music is it really runs the spectrum of generations and anyone can find joy and uh, enjoyment from a Luke Bryan song or a song from Carrie Underwood or uh, even Taylor Swift who got her start in country music. I just don't think there's any city tied to one genre of music like there is here with country. This is Alex Rosenblatt signing off from WMSD News. Every year, many artists go to Nashville to get their big break. Many of them don't make it, but for David Fanning, it was a bit different. Hey, I just gotta bring this up right now. Lay it out on the table. Well, um, so I got started in music. I, I got started with my family. They do um, acapella, 50s and 60s music. 
that's kind of where I came from and how I got into music in the first place. I'd go and sing with them. I was like the little Elvis, you know? So um, that's what made me love music. And I moved to Nashville when I was basically out of high school. I actually moved to LA for a couple of years and then moved to Nashville. And I was always, you know, going to be the artist, going to do this, be the rock star. This town is one of those towns where people can be here for ever and never have any success and I was blessed enough you know within like I said like a year and maybe a year and a half or so to, to be you know the number one it ended up going on to be the most played song of the entire year and uh, which was 2011 now so um, most played song of the year we were the first duo to win ACM uh, duo of the year since like Brooks and Dunn who had won it for I think whatever 15 years in a row or something so it's crazy being like a young kid and you know having all this crazy stuff happen. Being more progressive to me is is just it's not because I'm trying to do something different it's because that's just what I like because I listen to every type of music and you know when I first started producing you had to we were always considered edgy even when we were producing but I was like the rock guy. I think it, it changes over time so now that I'm doing it for me I'm, I'm doing it for other people too like you said but it, I'm doing it because I, not because I have to, because I want to. And I feel like when I had my record deal on a different label in town, uh, I was doing music because it was what they needed and wanted me to do. And I wasn't having fun doing music anymore. You know, like music was not fun. And when I lost the fun in music, there was, you know, I was still producing stuff, but as an artist, I was just like, man, this is lame. Story, but since yeah. I was maybe 17, I had this, opportunity I don't know one of my buddies friends or whatever they were like hey come play at our school and, you know it wasn't my school it was it was um, someone else's school and they were like you know we need a band to come play whatever I can't even remember what it was and I went in I played this show I was like, this is like a great idea just why don't you know I mean, you're all these people are playing these clubs of like 50 people and they're not getting anywhere and they're not having any influence on anything I was I was just thinking to myself you know this is kind of a cool concept. I can get in front of thousands of people, you know, and so that's how it kind of started. And over the years, I kind of stopped doing it for a while. And then as I got older and started having more success, I just wanted to go in and start sharing what I did because I came from this small town where nobody can be anybody. I mean, really, I mean, I don't know anybody from my town that's ever done anything, you know. And so it was one of those things where I was like, well, now I have power to at least help influence people to be able to be the best that they can be at what they want to be at. Um, I like to think I'm getting younger every day. <laughs> um, you know what it's done for me? I'll, I'll start off what it's done for me is it's kind of made me realize that people, you can influence people with music and I've always seen people do it but I've never known how to and so it's still teaching me okay this song impacts this person a certain way. So why not bring that into a positive light and help influence them for good and you know, kind of create a little bit more of a movement. I think a lot of people sleep too much is what I think. I really do because they're like, well, what do you do this? I'm like, well, I just have so much drive and passion. I want to produce music, I love it. You know, it's like, that's fun, but I also want to be the artist. So anytime someone tells me you got to focus on just one or the other, I'm like, no, I don't. I just got to sleep less and work harder. Classic. Yeah, we could be lovers. Yeah, we could be lovers. Now we go to Josh Reamer to see how students here are MST strong. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School has always been a diverse, special, and beautiful place. On February 14th, our school suffered a horrifying tragedy. Ever since, we have all been trying to support each other in order to cope and turn our collective heartbreak into something positive, becoming closer and more kinsman-like than ever before. I'm proud of my school because I think that we're bouncing back really well from like such a tragic event, and it's really um, like inspiring to see all these kids 
reaching out. Friends, family, and administrators here at MSD have helped each other throughout the grieving process, with every group offering unwavering support to each other. Ever since vast tragedy threatened our livelihood, we've been healing with the help of therapy dogs, grief counselors, and each other. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High is a phenomenal school, and it wouldn't be the place it is today without the students that fill it. So we ask students, what does being MSD Strong mean to you, and how do you make Douglas your own? To be MSD Strong is, it means to be part of a family. You can always rely on everyone at the school to help you cope with everything that has been going on. And it's just, it's really nice to know that there are other people that have went through the same thing. To be MSC strong, that means to um, support my kit, my fellow classmates, and teachers through everything we've been through. Sophia Bly. I'm Daniela. I'm Amanda Broughton. I am Cameron Kasky. And I'm MSD Strong. And I'm MSD Strong. I'm MSD Strong. I am MSD Strong. This is Josh Reamer from WMSD News, and we are MSD Strong. A group of students at Stoneman Douglas decided they wanted to share the stories that hadn't been heard yet. Here are those stories untold. Multiple people in her classroom are shot. On February 14th, my life was changed forever. I stood up and I saw things that no one should ever have to see. It was a day that I will never forget. My biggest worry was if I would ever see my parents. I don't want anyone to be desperate to find out if their loved ones are okay. My name is Morgan Williams. Melissa Saucedo. Sebastian Suarez. Juliana Matamoros. Nicole Velasquez. Darren Williams. Daniel Tavares. Lorena Sanabria. My name is Carlitos, and we deserve to share our untold story. the tragic events here at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Our TV production team, WMSD-TV, took it upon themselves to create a documentary with the help of our instructor. Here is that documentary. So going back to school was definitely a shock of reality. Um, I don't think it's actually hit me yet. It felt kind of uncomfortable. This is where, I mean, I went to high school here. I've been here for multiple years. They keep seeing us on TV or school and it just doesn't seem real. I honestly felt relieved because I was back home in a way. Well, it definitely felt like there was a completely different vibe. You know, walking back into the school, seeing everything, it just, it was completely different. There were so many police officers, there were therapy dogs, which we all love, everywhere. And it was just, it was like the first day of school, but your first day at the school, because it had felt completely different. Like I was in a completely different location. Half, you know, a big part of the school is a freshman building and it's completely blocked off. So it was just like a brand new school. I'm really hoping that our students are gonna make the biggest change in this country in general. Um, I think security is going to tighten. I think there's going to be a lot of parents who are going to be concerned about sending their kids back. Um, I am worried that we're going to still see some kids who just can't handle it and are going to leave. And hopefully we get more dogs on campus. I think we're going to start seeing a move back to curriculum, um, but I think you're going to see a lot less tests. It's going to be more of hitting on the basics and just trying to finding a way to get to that quote unquote new normal. We all had very different experiences that day and I've had different levels of loss and that's just something I had to be cognizant of every day with my classes so I know that some are just devastated and I know that some some are okay now and some are wanting to move on so it's a, a very wide variety. I think uh, our attitudes are gonna change we're gonna be more nicer to each other now that people are you know not with us anymore and we're all gonna get better from this and heal. I think there's going to be more security and people are going to be a little bit more um, on edge and stop joking about this kind of thing. I think things are going to be different at the school because a, several people were lost and it definitely affected a lot of us. I mean, a couple of teachers aren't even coming back and there are at least no four, I, at least no four kids that are coming back and it's just going to be a different vibe. In general, I mean, um, I would think that the kids are going to be a little bit more skittish than they normally are. I think in terms of curriculum, it's going to be hard to get back at it this year because of the fact that you know we've been off for so many weeks and we had this this tragedy happen to us. So I'm, I'm concerned about 
you know, I mean, first and foremost, I'm concerned about their, their emotional state. And then once we get past that, we can start slowly going back to the regular curriculum again. Like, it's not really going to be normal go back to life my normal life but it's mostly just surrounding myself with people that make me laugh like hanging out with my friends and just like trying to distract myself but also it's kind of it kind of helps to just like think about it and be like thankful about how that wasn't me put in this situation and just to kind of like count your blessings after the shooting getting back to normal life obviously wasn't easy for any of us and i feel like the only reason we kind of had to was getting back to school, which was pretty hard, but it felt normal again. Just trying to get back into a schedule and a routine, that always helps. And I wasn't doing very well on my own, so I started going to counseling, I started playing sports, I started to hang out with my friends, and everything just started clicking back into place where it was before. Well, I started seeing my friends, I started uh, going to classes, I started bringing my backpack back, and I started uh, trying to get back into some kind of routine with work. So on the time that we had off, uh, I spent a lot of time like going to the services, going to the funerals, um, going to all the memorials, just trying to grieve on my own, as well as like helping my friends grieve. Um, I also finished Game of Thrones, so. <laughs> Something that probably won't ever change is the support and the family that Douglas is. I know ever since this, the, the tragedy that had happened, the thing that happened, um, it brought us together. Something I feel like will never change is just like our bond to the teachers and our bond as students and just our capability to, no matter what happens, just to like stay strong and like be one try our best to just like get through anything especially something like this it just comes to show that we can go through anything and still like move on so what's not going to change is number one our positivity and how the community is doing because we've really come together in all of this we've healed each other we've gone through everything together even though some of us didn't know them we've all kind of felt that pain of their absence yeah, everybody's just kind of just grabbing all of the loved ones and like never letting go at this point. I think what hasn't changed is how tight the people in the school are. Like we've shown to the community obviously that like we're one big family. 